make some noise for your amazing host. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, step right up to the sparkling spectacle that will surely leave you speechless. Dare to be dazzled as you marvel at the marvelous, be thrilled by the thrilling, and wonder at the wonderful as you experience both sides of this supernatural balancing act. Welcome to the show. You can call me Miss Joelle, the high-flying acrobatic extraordinaire. And right here is where we experience the collision of both God's justice and mercy. We're calling this series Both Sides because God is both fair and forgiving to his people, even though sometimes those things seem to be on opposite sides. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at our next act. Coming up, let's find out if we can measure up. Stay tuned for another look at Both Sides. Speaking of measuring up, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, the tallest human in recorded history was Robert Wadlow of the United States. He was eight feet, 11 inches, and that is without any stilts. Now, as we make our way to the main event, you will first watch a pre-show video, then we will worship together, and then listen to today's Bible story spectacle. Click the download button below this video to access your Get Real Guide. Inside, you'll find some fun house features, dazzling details, and more. Let's check out this video. What is up, everybody? Welcome back. It is time to open up some of our letters and pop some of these balloons. We are so excited to find out what is inside, so join us as we jump into Mail, mail time. time. All right, before we get to these balloons, we've got two letters here. So let's start with this one from California. <gasps> the CA, huh? Tiny, almost pocket-sized note. Ooh. It says, thank you on the front. It says, dear Sandals Church kids, let many thank yous stay in your heart and let many more come. Here are many thanks from me. Thank you from Daphne. Daphne, thank you so much. I like this how is that so started. Encouraging. Let many thanks. That was cool. Yeah, very poetic. Yeah, Ahead I like that. Ahead of your that. time. I love it. Okay, and our next letter is from Mac. Thank you, Mac. Let's see what's inside. It says, your thoughtfulness means so much. <laughs> thank you for being such kind people. Aww. What's up with these letters? These are Mac. like, these are future poets. These are the kindest letters. Here, you write them a letter right now. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds or just improv it right now. Okay. Okay, so you have to rhyme it and you have to rhyme something nice back to them. While she's thinking, here are my ears wiggling. Did that give you enough time? All right, Daphne and Mac, here is your nice poem. Yes. To return the thanks that you've given us. Mac and Daphne, you've been so nice. I wish I could offer you a slice of pizza without any spice because you've been so very nice. Ooh, very good. Okay, at the end of that, we give a little snaps, little snaps. Past poet. Very good, past poet and future poet. <laughs> balloon time. I'm excited about this poetry coming in, which means now it's time to move on to our balloons. Okay. What color do you think is in here? What color paper? Yeah, what color paper? <laughs> White. Okay, what color paper is in here? White. What color paper is in here? Yellow. We, we need to check your prescription. Red. White, white, yellow, red. Here we go. Yep. Plug your ears. White. What? Yellow. yellow. Pink. Pink. Yellow. Oh. <laughs> I've got one right. You got one right. And no one can take that from you, Kelly. Here we go. Our first one, it says, I hope you have a great day and I wish you well. Love, Jackie. And it says, oh. Jesus loves you. So Jackie, kind. Jesus loves you too. All right, this one says Ooh, beautiful drawing i like your videos love sophia fire truck uh it looks like probably sophia on the fire truck and right here it says r-e-s-p-e-c-t respect back at you sophia thank you so much for this a little bit of respect goes a long way okay this one is from emily i love this one because emily drew a bunch of hearts but she put them together so it kind of looks like a flower Ooh, very creative i like that emily very creative Good stuff. Okay, and our last one on the yellow paper. Oh, I recognize this character. This 
is Jigglypuff. No, oh, it's Pikachu. It's Pikachu. I knew that. That's a great, I know you did. I was a 90s kid. That All right, is a great Pikachu, Pikachu on a yellow piece of paper. Super great. He's got his electric tail. He's ready to Pikachu. This is how you save on crayon right there. You get the color <laughs> yes. of the character and then you just do the outline. Genius. So good. All right, Marina Valley team. Uh, Daphne and Mac, thank you so much for all of your beautiful drawings, your kind words, your encouragement. We love you guys. And for the rest of you, if you want to know what it takes to get a letter right here on Mail Time, I'll let you know how it happens. There's two ways you can do it. Number one is you can send us a letter right through the mailbox using the address Sandals Church Kids, 150 Palmerita Avenue, Riverside, California, 92507. Or you can shoot us an email, which is super quick, and you can use mail at sandalskids.com to reach us. We can't wait to hear from you guys. We loved hanging out with you. We'll see you next time right here. It's time to worship together. Today, we're talking about how God's love is more powerful than our sin. And that means we can choose to turn back to God. God's love being more powerful than our sin is something to celebrate. While you worship today, turn back to God through your worship by singing out loud courageously. In this life there are many things, like big houses and diamond rings, but nothing compares to you. Like my phone and my video games I like them both but they're not the same Cause nothing compares to you And nothing replaces you Are there any gods like you God? No, no, no There are no gods like you God No, no, no You are wonderfully holy and amazingly powerful And you do great miracles Are there any gods like you, God? No, no, no There are no gods like you, God No, no, no You are wonderfully holy And amazingly powerful And you do great miracles No other God can split the sea no other god gets capital G Other gods are made of sticks and stones But you're the only god that's on the throne You're the only god who gave life to me And the only one who died for me Nothing compares to you Nothing compares to you Are there any gods like you, God? No, no, no There are no gods like you, God No, no, no You are wonderfully holy and amazingly powerful And you do great miracles Are there any gods like you, God? No, no, no There are no gods like you, God No, no, no You are wonderfully holy And amazingly powerful Yeah, there are no
A fresh start from God's heart from the Bible in Hosea chapter 11, verse 1 through 11. We'll learn how God can amazingly be both just and merciful at once and how He is always good to His people, even when they don't follow Him. This week, we'll see how God's love is more powerful than our sin, and that means we can choose to turn back to God. So brace yourself under the bright lights because the show begins in three, two, one. Imagine if you were able to create your very own hybrid pet out of two or more different animals. Maybe you mix together a sweet dog, a silly cat, a sassy guinea pig, and a cuddly bearded dragon into a cadro pig. You took care of your pet by feeding them every single day, petting them, playing with them, and cleaning up after their messes. You spent lots of time loving your pet, and your pet loved you back. They would snuggle up next to you and always be happy when you were together. But then one day, your pet stopped coming near you. They would completely ignore you and even hiss at you when you tried to pet them. You had no idea what had happened. You were still taking really good care of them and you were loving them just like you always did. So how would you feel? What would you do? Did you know that the Israelites did something very similar to God in the Bible? Well, let's check it out. Last week, we left off with the end of our series called Off Track, where we told cautionary tales about straying from God's path. Now today, we continue our story as the Israelites keep choosing to ignore God and His commands. We pick up right in the middle of the Northern Kingdom of Israel with a man named Hosea. Hosea was a prophet or a messenger of God who shared God's message about His love for His people. Hosea actually means God saves or salvation. Hosea became a prophet during a terrible time in Israel. They had one of the worst kings whose name was Jeroboam II, and he didn't care about God at all. And there was a nation called Assyria who also didn't care about God, and they had just taken over. Now God said that he loved the Israelites like a father loves his children, but that they had turned away from him and followed other gods. Now, remember, the Israelites had chosen to turn away from God and stop doing the right things big time. And on top of that, they started worshiping the Assyrian god Baal instead of the one true God. 
And no matter how many chances God had given them, they chose to keep doing the wrong things over and over and over again. Hosea knew exactly how this felt. His own wife, whose name was Gomer, had turned away from him and ran off many times, just like the Israelites had from God. Hosea gave mercy to Gomer even when she sinned against him, just like God gives us mercy when we sin. Hosea reminded the Israelites that God had led the Israelites with kindness, provided for them, and freed them, but they still ignored everything he said. It would make sense that God would be angry at the Israelites. They deserved it, right? And even so, God loved the Israelites with his whole heart. He didn't want to be angry with them, punish them, and leave them like they deserved. Instead, God called the people back to himself and promised to bring them back to their home in the future. Wait a second, is anyone else completely confused? God has every right to be angry at the Israelites. He loved them more than anyone else, and they ignored what he said and started worshiping other gods instead of him. That's pretty terrible. But God chose to love them anyway. In fact, he loved them so much, he didn't even want to feel mad at them. Now, when someone doesn't give you the consequence or punishment you deserve, it's called mercy. He chose to love them instead of giving them what they deserved. Our sin might be strong, but God is always stronger. And that's why the one thing to remember is that God's love is more powerful than our sin. God's powerful love reminds me of this trick I know. So I'm gonna set this ruler on the table so it's hanging off the edge. Now I'm gonna drop this ball on the free end of the ruler. What do you think is gonna happen? Let's check it out. Well, obviously the ball made the ruler fall off the table, and that's pretty much what I expected would happen. So now let's try something different. I'm gonna take this same ruler, set at the edge of the table, but now I'm gonna place a piece of paper on top of the ruler. What do you think will happen now? Will the paper stop the ruler from falling when I drop the ball on it? Let's check it out. What? Did you see that? Just this piece of paper stopped the ball from knocking this ruler off. Here, let's try it again. What? Can you believe that the paper was strong enough to stop the ruler from falling? It makes me think of how powerful God's love is. It seemed like the ball would be way heavier and stronger than the piece of paper, right? Sometimes we think our sin is too much or too heavy for God to handle. But just like the force of the paper was stronger than the ball, God's love for us is more powerful than our sin. God chooses to always love us. And that's why we should want a good relationship with him. Who doesn't wanna be with someone who loves them even more than their sin? God's love gives us the option to turn away from our sin and come back to him. That's why our action step for today is that we can choose to turn back to God. Hi, my name is Rachel, and I want to tell you about a time that I chose to turn back to God. Growing up, school came pretty easy for me. I was a hardworking student, I got good grades, and I almost never needed help. I cared a lot about being a good student. Then in eighth grade, I started algebra, and it was so hard, and I did not get it. I struggled a lot. I didn't want to ask for help because I liked being known as a good student, so I started cheating to get by. Throughout that school year, I cheated a lot. I felt far from God because I was cheating and lying almost every day. Sometimes I would even confess to God and say I was done cheating. But after cheating so much, it was even harder to understand the algebra homework, and so I would end up cheating again. The summer after that school year, I went to church summer camp and felt so guilty about my cheating. It made me sick to my stomach. I ended up confessing to God at camp. After that, I knew I had to come home and share with someone else, so I confessed to my mom. She was so glad that I told her, and she forgave me, but there was still a consequence. I ended up having to repeat that entire year of math. That felt so embarrassing. 
But after confessing my sin, I turned back to God and felt peace in my relationship with Him. I felt like a huge weight had been lifted. During that year, I still struggled with the math, but I learned to ask for help instead of cheating. I felt God's love and forgiveness when I turned away from my sin. Just like I chose to turn back to God after I cheated in math, you can choose to turn back to God too. Before we wrap with the razzle dazzle, let's review today's memory verse from Micah chapter six, verse eight. The Lord has told you what is good. He has told you what he wants from you. Do what is right to other people. Love being kind to others and live humbly trusting your God. We saw in our story how the Israelites turned away from God over and over and how God still chose to love them. That's why the one thing to remember is that God's love is more powerful than my sin and that means we can choose to turn back to God. Our circus is coming to a close for this week, but you can keep living out the vision of being real with yourself, God, and others by opening up your Get Real Guide to the Now What. Find a quiet place to sit down for a few minutes by yourself. Ask yourself if you are doing anything that is pushing you away from God. Maybe it's arguing with your parents. Maybe you're being mean to a sibling, ignoring a kid at school who just wants to be your friend or being selfish with a friend. God loves you so, so much, even when you sin and turn away from Him. But you can always choose to turn back to God by admitting what you've done and asking for forgiveness. Try doing that this week. We'll see you next week right here for more of Both Sides.